So, the new Stone Shard patch dropped. Can't say I've been taking it well since it's been quite the wild ride. Got my ass kicked pretty hard by the nerfs too. Now I can't rush dungeons like before. But hey, this is what this video is for. Me withstanding the brunt of the patch changes so you don't have to. The weapon you should definitely choose in this circumstance is the spear. You all might be asking, why the spear, Carl? Well, you choose the spear because it lets you hit people three times before they even get to combat distance with you. The motto of a spear player is that honor doesn't pay the bills, winning does. As usual, start with Velmir since he already has spear skills, plus his stats allow you to get all of the spear skills except maneuver at level 10. If you prefer to get maneuver at level 10 and the stay back skill at level 11, you should choose honor instead. Now. The thing about spear skills is that three of the skills required at least four in agility with this character, not counting treatises. This means there's several routes on how you can assemble the build stats. The first route is going full agility, which I argue is the most optimal way to spec for spears, as spears do not have an injury-based mechanic, nor enough of a block power to justify leveling strength. Going for the dodge route also means you don't have to pay as much for armor. The hybrid route means you go with strength until you hit 15 points, like in my case, and then go for agility until you reach 15 points. Where you allocate the extra stat is up to you. The problem with this method is that there will be a point where you have to spend an entire level without using the skill point, since you have not reached the required agility yet. The last route, which is full on strength, is primarily geared towards characters that are interested in heavier armors. Although it synergizes really well with block chance and power that halberds do assist with, you are forced to procure a level 2 and level 3 treatise if you wish to unlock the more advanced skills, or you can choose to ignore the rest of the spear tree and perhaps even invest in other ones. Again, up to you. Now, the first two skills I'd recommend you go for at the start would be Nail Down and Seize the Initiative. You might be wondering why I chose Seize the Initiative instead of Impaling Lunge. It's because, unlike Impaling Lunge, Seize the Initiative not only has a two-tile range with spears, it also does full damage to immobilized targets as well. The other neat thing about the skill is that it debuffs enemies whilst buffing you at the same time. So if you do meet enemy spearmen or two-handed axe users with their two-tile range attacks, you can reduce the chances of them actually landing those attacks by using the skill on them first. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Impaling Lunge is bad, it can hit two targets at once, but in my opinion, you should use it as a third free hit skill after Nail Down and seize the initiative to do 100% of the damage. Besides, in early game, you want to have as few enemies aggroed at you as possible. The next skill I'd suggest after seize the initiative and Nail Down would be the No Retreat one, since it's particularly useful for capitalizing on choke points and even help with Nail Down's immobilization chance. Not to mention, it is a good passive skill to fall back on when the nail down skill fails to immobilize enemies. After those three, you can choose whichever skills you want, but I'd highly suggest getting Pikeman's stance as soon as possible as, unlike any other weapon stances, it increases in duration when you stay within the same square. So you can accumulate stance stacks far easier and in turn increase your deadliness. Other than all these skills within the spear tree, I would go for the opportune moment skill from Combat Mastery to help with the spear's sheer amount of energy use. Although spears can be good even without lots of active skill usage, the energy gain from opportune moment really helps with maximizing the spear's potential. For equipment, you should choose the ones that suit the stat distribution you went with. Those who invest all or mainly in agility should go for armor pieces like a duelist doublet and boots. If one goes for more strength, consider investing into heavier armors instead. So far, since Burn no longer sells as much high tier equipment as it before, and that you have to practically bribe Bryn guild officials to access a larger stock of higher tier equipment, I went with the usual quilted coat, mailed Cervelia, and splinted fan braces and boots. It worked well enough, so you're not exactly bound to a small choice of equipments in this regard. Although, I definitely recommend going for gold accessories, or specifically, the exquisite variant, since it helps with energy better than the normal variant. Then again, any ring or necklace that adds energy capacity will work. There are a couple of tricks with the spear that I usually use. The first one is the old stab and run. Wait till an enemy gets within two tile distance, 
you snail down and, while he's immobilized, stab him with Seize the Initiative or Impaling Lunge. After that, you just run until the cooldown's finished and repeat until the enemy's dead or the nail down skill fails to immobilize. Second is to use a vertical corridor in a dungeon in order to avoid getting shot with arrows or magic and funnel enemies into a manageable choke point. Technically speaking, all melee weapons can't do this, but spears can use this technique particularly well as when one hides on the right side of the corridor's entrance, their two tile attacks can actually reach an enemy two tiles away. Weapons with no two tile attack capability, on the other hand, risks enemy range units being smart enough to run away when one does try to chase them. It gets pretty annoying since attacks of opportunity only happens 50% of the time, and that is if you've landed an attack on them first as they just lead you on a goose chase. Third trick I like to use is to hide behind a door. Usually spellcasters would prefer to melee the door instead of casting magic on it, so this is a very handy way to deal with ranged enemies if you don't find a vertical corridor. The best part about this tactic is that the enemy archer or crossbowman would sometimes switch to melee to break the door down instead of using their ammunition. The main advantage of spears, as I've said before, is that you can hit enemies before they even have the chance to engage you in melee, and perhaps slay them before they attempt a swing. Besides that, lack of shields means you have a lot more energy to go around and can afford to wear heavier armors or perhaps spam more of the skills. The two-tile range of spear skills also mean that unlike other melee weapons, spears work very well with traps that are sold by the poacher, allowing you to take on fights that you normally can win. Still, it's not without its disadvantages. Until you get the maneuver skill, which requires attributes that you can only reach at level 11 in Velmir's case, or 10 in Arna's, spears tend to lean more towards being stationary. You better learn to pick a good spot to maximize on your passives, else you'd miss out on the increased crit chance. Since it's a two-handed weapon, you're a lot more vulnerable to arrow fire in exchange for being more resilient against magic since you can have heavier armor from not having energy penalty from shields. That's all I have to say about this build and how it relates to the current state of the game. I hope all of you here had fun watching this. If you like this video, do subscribe. And as always, have a great time.